From the American conservative, Trump escalates killer drone war and no one seems to care. There is no evidence that it's improved anyone's security in the Horn of Africa or in the U.S. America's drone wars have become even more destructive at the same time. They have become increasingly opaque. The Trump administration has significantly increased the tempo of drone strikes in a number of countries, and it has relaxed the rules governing the targeting of these strikes. The result has been an increased number of civilian casualties with even less accountability than before and no redress for the innocent people caught in the middle of our endless wars. The U.S. government restricts the information that is publicly available about these attacks and that in turn ensures that there is very little public scrutiny or criticism of an open-ended military campaign. To make matters worse, the additional strikes seem to have done nothing to reduce the activities of al-Shabaab, and instead the threat posed by the group is greater than before. The drone war in Somalia is just one part of this campaign, and it exemplifies what is wrong with the open-ended war on terror. Like the other wars he inherited, President Trump has significantly escalated it. Through the end of 2019, there had already been 148 U.S. strikes launched in Somalia since Trump took office. In just the first half of 2020, there have been as many U.S. drone strikes in Somalia as there were between 2007 and 2016. In less than three and a half years, Trump has more than quadrupled the number of attacks in Somalia ordered by his last two predecessors. Now, this is something that, that I predicted, right? That in the shift of war, looking at what governments can get away with, right? That we are living in the most peaceful times in human history. Less people die by violence than ever before. This is the story of human progress, this great decline in violence. And if you look just at the global war of terror, there was already a significant shift. And even, even Vietnam, right? You just look at World War II, Vietnam, global war on terror. In World War II, they could say, look, all of those people there want to kill you. We have to send all of our best and brightest over there to go and kill them. And they could put out the lies that could convince millions of gullible young men to meet in the middle of a field where none of them live and kill each other because they're wearing different colors. You can't get away with that lie anymore. Even in Vietnam, right, which is maybe the last America had to somewhat of a major large force-on-force -force scale war, except for the invasion of Iraq and the invasion of Afghanistan. And this was of a, of a much larger scale, of course. It was that's the communists. We had to fight the communist regime. Regime was all it was. It was a proxy war, right? So in Iraq and Afghanistan, they couldn't say though, we need to go destroy these countries. It was we need to take out the corrupt governments and occupy them, and you know that that sort of thing. And it's less destructive overall. Now, what happens when you can have robots fight your war for you? Well, that's what we have today. They're called drones. They're robots. They're flying robots that kill people from the sky. I don't, I don't know. I, well, what else did you, did it have to look like Terminator for you to get it that we're there already? I hope not. No, we're already there. And there's a sort of asymmetry in the power where American uh, military forces have this incredible technology where the terrorists don't. And when you are capable of this surgical strike, right? You can't justify sending in troops, which would be worse, which would be more costly, more dope. So this is still a decline in the viciousness of the war racket. Eventually, hopefully it'll go to, well, when you have a conflict, you have your robots fight their robots and nobody gets hurt. Still a positive development. Overall, where is this going? I don't know. Is it gonna, is, is, I, I mean, overall, long term, I know where it's going. It's going to keep declining. The viciousness of war will continue to get lower and lower as humanity continues to progress. So we go now to foreignpolicy.com. 
Trump inherited the drone war, but ditched accountability. Only a single formal check remains on U.S. killings worldwide. License to kill. Our murderer in chief can just drop bombs on anybody all over the world. What stops him? On March 10, a U.S. drone fired a missile, turning a passenger vehicle just outside Janali, Somalia, into a heap of burnt and broken metal with fresh corpses inside. Whether the people killed that day were terrorists or ordinary Somalis is actively disputed. It is also a reminder that the United States targeted killing program persists to this day, another legacy of the forever war that has now lasted for three presidential administrations and shows no signs of stopping in the next one. Under U.S. President Donald Trump, however, an already opaque and murderous set of rules has become even more widely applied and even less accountable. Now, this goes back, way back. The elastic nature of the September 2001. 2001. What happened in September of 2001, Jim? Oh, yeah, never forget 9-11. That way we can use it as an excuse for militarism as long as you remember how bad it was and not what really caused it. The elastic nature of the 2001 authorization for the use of military force is stretched so far as to cover strikes in Yemen, Libya, and Somalia. The first modern drone attack, a Hellfire missile fired from a CIA pilot predator drone in October 2001 was covered by the AUMF as was the airstrike in Janali, conducted by U.S. Africa Command, itself born in the dying years of President George W. Bush's administration as part of the War on Terror. In a press release also published March 10, AFRICOM claimed that its attack on Janali killed five terrorists shortly after. Images of the wrecked vehicle began to circulate online, some linked to al-Shabaab, the terror group, actively targeted by the strike, claiming that instead it had left only civilians dead. Subsequent investigations by journalists found relatives of the deceased to attest to the innocence of their family members. As of April 27, AFRICOM reports the incident is still open and under investigation. Now, we brought you the story earlier today that there were terror groups attempting to spread the coronavirus, at least according to government sources. Now, if Trump can order a drone strike on any terrorist, and terrorists are trying to spread the virus to you, could they hit you with the drone? Or hit the terrorist with the drone? And oh, well, we had to take the other person out because they had the coronavirus too. Now, this might be a stretch. I don't think that's really realistic. But if they can say you're a terrorist for trying to spread the virus, could they call you a terrorist for going to Walmart without a mask on? If maybe you knew you had tested positive, maybe maybe you posted on social media that you had the sniffles or that you had the runs. Because now those are those are official symptoms of the coronavirus and then you go to a walmart without a mask well you're terrorizing people you're causing fear now are we going to have a drone strike on an american on u.s soil oh highly unlikely but an american abroad now i know what you're thinking adam that's just as much of a stretch too why would american military forces think it's okay to kill an American civilian, uh, just because just they're not in the United States. Well, it's already happened. Who was it? There was a cleric. It was a Muslim cleric. It was a U.S. citizen. I used to know the name because it was an important story in looking at the global war on terror. All right, Jim's going to look it up here. And then they killed his son, who was also an American citizen. And you go, wait a second. Maybe you're not too far off here, Adam. But why should you care more that American lives are at risk? This is probably not you. 
as opposed to foreigners' lives being at risk from the same unjust violence of the U.S. military. So what is the uh, what is the uh, restriction here? As with many policies enacted by executive order under the Obama administration, the rule held the weight of law for only so long as an administration decided it wanted to follow it. Without passing the accountability into law through the legislative branch, the order did nothing to meaningfully constrain the actions of the next president. So where does this go? What is the actual restraint? Skipping ahead, skipping ahead, skipping ahead. A report by the Stimson Center in February found that in addition to changing how it used battlefield designations, the Trump administration rolled back a host of Obama-era drone policies. That meant relaxed restrictions on exports of drones and laser designators, relaxed oversight on military drones sold abroad, greater authority for both military commanders and the CIA in choosing to attack targets, and removing the reporting requirement for casualties outside of designated battlefields. The rollback of transparency measures itself was opaque and barely covered, a pattern that would continue in the way the Trump administration handled the killings. A single formal check remains on the secrecy surrounding drone killings. While Congress has long handed broad discretion on war power authorities to the executive, The 2018 National Defense Authorization Act for the first time mandated that the Pentagon submit annual reports on confirmed or suspected civilian casualties by U.S. military operations. So, now what's the exception here? Oh, well, anytime the military feels that releasing that information would compromise security or secrecy of, of, of their operation, then then they don't... There's a loophole through this that you could drive a Mack truck through. So what is it really? Unless there's obvious outrage, what is the only accountability here? Public outrage. Al-Awlaki. Did you find it? Uh, Anwar Al-Awlaki. That guy. Anwar al Awlaki was the Muslim cleric. What was his son's name? You have it. You have the Wikipedia story uh, there. Yeah, it was uh, Abdullah. Ab- Abdul. Uh, it's A B D U L R A H A L. Abdullah. Okay. Abdul-Law. So his son was what a young teenager, and was also killed with a uh, a drone strike. because they were Muslim and they were outside of the United States. Being American citizens did not protect them. And there was huge outrage. Did anything change? Apparently not. Certainly not in any meaningful way. If anything, the government just said, we need more of this power. And they took it. And now no one is safe. Donald Trump has a license to kill from the skies with the only check on that being public opinion. And right now, public opinion is pretty messed up. 